Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Health Babes podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Crystal Hone, and I'm joined by my beautiful friend, Dr. Becky Campbell. Say hi, Beck. <laughs> Hello. Giggling before we got on, so we're in quite a mood today. But today we're going to talk about all about the immune system and you know, we're starting to get into fall season, winter season. So we wanted to give you guys some simple, effective things that you can start incorporating today to support this amazing system. So why don't we, you know, start diving in to let's just dive in back. So let's start with sleep. Okay. So it's very frustrating when people say you need to get more sleep. It's like, yeah. oh, thank you. I know that. But how do I do that? <laughs> so I'm going to tell you exactly what I do. Chris and I yeah. have like a almost identical routine and it's really helpful, but not everybody has to go to the same lengths. Like I'm a really light sleeper. So yeah. Crystal, are you a light sleeper? No, like well, once someone gets me up, it takes me a little bit to fall back asleep, but yeah. I guess you could say I'm a light sleeper. Like, would you hear noise if you didn't use your sound machine? Hundred percent. Yeah. So you're a light sleeper. Okay. Yeah. So, so we both have sound machines. We've mm-hmm. both. Sw- Did you get the brown sound yet? I, did, I didn't. Yeah, yet. that's on my list okay. of many things that I need Do to do that soon. You know. <laughs> okay. So, so I used to listen to white noise. Mm-hmm. Um. Actually, I used to listen to a giant box fan, and it was so funny. Yeah. Like people would make fun of me in college because. If I was going to go to a friend's to sleep over, I'd have to bring my huge fan. And yeah. then I found like a smaller fan. And if I was going on an airplane, I would literally half my suitcase would be my fan. <laughs> it's true. A lot of people use box fans. I mean, yeah. I know a lot of my girlfriends growing up did before they've even heard of sound machines. I feel like sound machines were big with babies, right? As we were raising our babies and wanting to quiet, don't wake the baby up. Yeah. But it's a very effective thing to help your sleep if you are a light sleeper. So go ahead. Yeah. And- so there's different colored sound, which I mm-hmm. only recently learned. So I used to listen to white noise, but white noise is very sharp, right? It's like a sharp noise. And they say that white noise is better if you're trying to stay awake and like study that kind of thing but you're trying to block out noise. Brown noise is what I listen to now. It's a lot more soothing. It's more like a lower uh, pitch Mm -hmm. and it's really soothing and I really like it. So that's number one, because if I'm the type of person, if I hear a noise, I'll wake up. So that's why we listen with, we sleep with sound machines. If you're not like that, skip this part. Um, I have to have complete darkness. You know, Mm -hmm. I, even in the dark, I wear eye masks um, because I, it, first of all, I started doing it to block out light, but then I started to like the way it felt on my face. It's kind of like a comfort oh. thing, which is why we like those sleep crown pillows because it's almost, it's literally like giving your head a hug. So, but you can also just get a cheap Amazon sleep mask. That's what, you know, I have used the majority of the time. So that keep the room um, dark. And then um, cool, you want to keep it nice and cool, you know, because your body starts to heat up as you're sleeping. So you may go to bed and not be hot. And then in the middle of the night, you're going to get more hot. So, you know, if you're pulling covers off and you're sweating in the middle of the night, that's not going to give you a good sleep. So um, do you get like that at all? Or do you guys, because you're in Michigan, I mean, it's just so cold. I know it's so cold in the winters, but I, I tend to sleep better if, the room is cool. So you know how in Michigan, we have a lot of basements and upstairs the way our houses are. And so it gets really hot up there. And it definitely will affect my sleep if I don't keep the temperature a certain, you know, degree. And me and my husband, we have thermostat wars. It's actually kind of funny. Does he like it colder? <laughs> he d- Well, he gets really hot. You know, he's yeah. more hot. I run a little bit more cold. So, you know, I'm game to cozy up and let him keep it really cold, but you sleep really good. It's true. You want it to be nice and cool to get it. That metabolism on his side. (laughs) I just got to keep up with that. You know, just. Uh, (laughs) um, Okay. So avoiding caffeine within eight hours of sleeping, super important. Caffeine can actually have more like a 12 hour, uh, life, I guess you call it in your body. So 
Definitely at least eight hours because you can definitely, it can really keep you up if it's in your system. And then light is really important. So light, getting light during the day, you want to get light in the beginning of the day. So sun exposure, and then you want to keep things darker at night. So this, this is one of the reasons watching TV in bed is hard is, is a problem because you're getting the light, you're getting the blue light and the other colors that are in there that are affecting your brain, keeping your brain really awake. Plus what you're watching a lot of the time, it can tend to make your cortisol go up because it's stressful (laughs) or you're crying from a sad story right before you go to bed. Yeah. And I would say the worst thing would be scrolling, right? Because I was listening to this awesome podcast that you sent me the mm-hmm. Caitlin, uh, the I forget her last name, but uh, what is her podcast called? Oh gosh, a uh, what? Oh geez, I'm having a brain. We'll figure it. We'll off the vine, off the Caitlin Bristol. Off the vine, yeah, 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 yeah. So she had this woman on who she has no social media, she has no internet, she has none of those capabilities on her phone. She has a gab phone, so she can only call and text. And she was explaining how when you're not there to witness something that you may watch a video of, let's say you're watching a video and someone gets hurt. If you're not there to watch it, your sympathetic nervous system isn't going to react the way that it would if you were actually there. So you kind of get stuck in fight or flight when you're watching these videos, like you're not prepared for what you're going to see. And especially if you're scrolling, you're seeing something that might really raise your cortisol and then something else and something else. And we go so fast and think about that. It's doing to your brain. So I say, keep the phone away. And if you can keep the TV away for at least an hour before you go to bed, I like to lately, I've been really listening to audio books at bedtime and man, they put me right to sleep. <laughs> it really does. Especially if you read a little bit, you know, to oh, like, yeah book to your eyes. It's very therapeutic. I find Chris, Chris will fall asleep super fast. So he tends to do like an audio too. Yeah. Chris, my husband. But um, yeah, you, you definitely want to do more calming things like that. And going back to blue light too, let's say you do watch a TV show, you know, where no one's perfect. Okay. Right. You want to maybe do something like blue light blockers, right? Or put your phone on um, the amber light, right? Yeah. To really take away a lot of that blue light. Because that's what's going to affect that melatonin. It's going to affect your cortisol awakening response, your energy the next day, your deep sleep. That's really important, you guys, when it comes to sleep. So these little things that we're giving you, they seem like simple, right? But if you really do stick to them, and you make it a habit with your sleep, you're going to start to feel better over time. And you're going to start getting into better sleep habits. You're going to notice you get into a deeper sleep better. So you just got to put a lot of these in, in habit to see the effects. Yeah. And the, the blue light also, it raises cortisol and lowers melatonin. So mm-hmm. I had, I know someone whose child was really addicted to iPads and that kind of stuff for a long time. And um, her daughter was really, really heavy, not even eating like an enormous amount of food or anything like that. But it was, it was that and then not able to sleep until like seven in the morning, not able to go to bed, and barely able to sleep at that point, having to take melatonin, like all these things. Um, and you know, she had to get really strict and take this away because it really, really was affecting her. So we've seen it a lot. We've worked with a lot of people like this, you know, we've seen it. So anyway, that type of stuff, um, and, you know, keeping it nice and dark. So not having like the bright lights on all over your house at night, kind of keeping it down, you know, a little bit darker, dim the lights, you know, just kind of calming down that nervous system and getting ready for bed. Yes. Have a good bedtime routine, whether you're taught, you know, you're reading, like Becky said, whether you're just maybe take an Epsom salt bath, put some nice essential oils on the bottoms of your feet and do calming things. Even if you want to journal from the day, 
it's really, really important and it works if you stick with it. And, and this yeah. is a lot of the tools, simple tools, you know, outside of supplementation and things like that, that can be somewhat beneficial. But a lot of the time when we see patients struggling with insomnia or things like that, they're not doing a lot of these things, these simple things that you can be, you know, incorporating. So let's move on to diet. Um, to support the immune system, we really need to limit sugar intake. You guys, sugar is the big old culprit of suppressing the immune system. So you want to stay away from processed foods, sugar, high amounts of sugar. Um, you want to avoid refined seed oils. This is extremely inflammatory, right? So seed oils are things like sunflower oil, canola oil, safflower, right? And the, the oils that you do want to bring in are animal fats, things like lard, duck fat, um, olive oil, coconut oil, even butter. Butter is great. So you want to stay away from those refined seed oils. Gluten, Becky, <laughs> how much do we talk about gluten? I and we, know. we get the eye roll with this, you know, and it's, it is a hard subject, but we have found that overall, and this is what we see with our patients every day and, and, the, and the women and men that we've worked with is gluten is very inflammatory. And so, especially if you're dealing with underlying gut things, you need to be careful of that, right? And so limiting gluten can really help the immune system. And that that's really what we've seen. Conventional dairy is something that you know, we find that we've taken it out with patients, we've brought it back in depending on where they're at with their healing journey. But when you are bringing in some dairy, you want it to be more in the raw form. So like raw milk, raw cheeses, things like that, but staying away from the highly processed, filled with hormones, you know, antibiotics and things like that, you want to get your dairy from better sources. And then of course, you know, for the immune system, you want to stay away from artificial ingredients. So coloring guys, especially with your kids, stay away from food coloring. And I know it's hard with being in school. And even sometimes my kids get exposed to this. Like, you know, I struggle with this too sometimes, and we all do right as parents, but how many, I mean, Becky, how much do we see this with kids with attention deficit? Oh yeah. Um, like with the food coloring and the artificial Especially food, red, yeah. Oh, yeah, red 40. So definitely, if you want to support your immune system, you want to, you know, buy things that have minimal ingredients shop in the outside of your grocery stores, you should be able to read your labels and know what's in your products. So definitely stick with that. And then of course, choose nutrient dense meats like organ meats, um, organic, um, red meat, lean meats, low glycemic fruits, veggies, starchy tubers. And, and of course we touch base on some healthy fats. So you just want to eat lots of color, low inflammatory to really support the immune system. Um, and you will start to notice that you don't catch things as easy if your diet is on point. And I, I say that light, like, but it's true. You, if yeah. you really give your body what it needs, you're not going to catch everything under the sun. Your but your stress is going to be more, you know, you're going to adapt more to your environment. You're not going to catch every virus or bacteria, right? So you want to support it with, um, you know, really good nutrient dense diet. And you want to add, uh, there's a lot of immune supporting foods too, that can actually really help. And you know, we're going to get into supplements, but you do want to try to do stuff with food too. So you're not taking tons of supplements. So greens are really, um, they can be really supportive, like arugula. Arugula is really good because it's low in oxalate. So some people have issues with things like spinach and kale, and they do much better with something like arugula. And histamine. Um, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Especially spinach with histamine. Um, cucumbers, celery, you know, the whole celery juice craze. Uh, I actually really do think celery juice is super beneficial. I'm not saying go out and get, you know, make it. I'm way too lazy or busy, yeah. whatever you want to put it to make celery juice. But I have gone through periods where I will order it from this company. I can't remember who it is right now, but, um, and, and I do like, it, and I like it a lot for its electrolytes, you know, yeah. especially if I'm in the sauna, I'm, I'm doing either like a coconut water or an element packet or something like uh, celery yeah. juice. So 
And then really good for digestion too. Yeah, very. And a lot of things. It's really good liver support too. So cruciferous veggies like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, all that stuff, broccoli seed or broccoli sprouts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a broccoli seed. Um, <laughs> And then things like, you know, herbs and spices, you can have um, turmeric. Ginger has so many benefits. Speaking of histamine, it's, it's, you know, very good antihistamine support, but it's just really good for the immune system. It's good for inflammation. Garlic is also really good for that, that stuff too. So um, basil's really good. And gosh, isn't, is it not delicious? I just love basil. We do. Yeah. (laughs) And even mint too. Mint is really good. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. just adding that stuff to your food, you know, can be really helpful. And there's some fruits like low glycemic fruits, uh, Mm -hmm. berries, you know, berries are really high in antioxidants or high in vitamin C, Um, you know, lime, even adding lemon or lime to your water can be helpful if you tolerate those. Uh, Most people do. I'm only saying that because some people with histamine issues don't. So And then the healthy fats, we love the healthy fats. Avocado has so many benefits, you Mm -hmm. know, as long, again, as you tolerate those, again, the only people who wouldn't would probably be someone with histamine issues. But if you saw my hilarious Instagram (laughs) post, we did (laughs) the avocado uh, less ripe. If you do have histamine issues can be lower in histamine. So try it out if you haven't tried it. And if you're missing avocados, I have found depending on where I was in my health journey with avocados, that the less ripe, it it definitely doesn't make me, you know, my, my skin would start to itch. This was back Mm -hmm. in the day when I was going through all the hormone stuff. It really does work. You know, it does. Yeah. Because I used to get an instant headache from avocados. Mm -hmm. And if I eat them less ripe, I was fine because they're, they're so healthy otherwise. So you really want to try to, to do those if you can. Yeah. Um, what other fats we've talked about them before coconut oil, olive oil, grass fed butter, that type of stuff. Yeah. And then again, getting into the lean, healthy, you know, organic meats, which we already talked about. And then if you tolerate, um, fermented foods, kimchi, sauerkraut, kefir, Um, and those type of things are really good. And then we have the mushrooms, which, you know, the mushrooms have kind of, uh, really been in the spotlight the last, what do you think? Five years? I'd say so. Yeah. Um, so mushrooms like reishi, which is also an antihistamine. So they're really good during allergy season, cordyceps, turkey tail. Those are all good. Yeah. So those are, we just like to give you guys more ideas. Cause when you, when you hear nutrient dense diet, you're like, yada, 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 but give me some ideas of foods. And we wanted to list some of them out for you so that you had a better understanding of, you know, what, what are powerhouses for the immune system. So other things that are really important is getting outside, getting fresh air, you guys, especially in the winter times, when you're stuck in your house, our houses can be an area that is just laden with toxins and chemicals. You got to keep, we got to have fresh air. Think about it. Our furniture, the paint, right? Things like that mold. A lot of people live in mold. So you want to get out as much as you can and get fresh air. We love also the air fresheners, the air purifiers, um, air doctor. They're great, you know, to put in the various different rooms in your house. Um, you can also get a MERB 16 air filter for your HVAC. That's a really good thing. But yeah. overall, we spend way too much time in our houses. We need to be outside. We need to be getting that full spectrum light in the morning and throughout the day. It's very, very important for your immune system. And you want to get as much sun as you can. I know it's harder in different areas of the world. Like I'm in Michigan, Bex in Florida. She's like in the middle of the winter, she's outside walking and I'm like, freezing and it's so (laughs) cold and there's no sun sometimes. And so I have to force myself. I get outside, even if it's not sunny, you're still getting the benefits of that full spectrum light exposure. So don't think because you're not getting access to a lot of sun, you can't still benefit from being outside because it really is important. And then try to ground yourself, like touch the earth, get your feet in the sand, put your feet in the dirt, you know, be outside. Yes. Wherever, whatever you have access to. Think about just, you just want to be out in nature. And if you, 
you know it more than anybody. If you go on vacation and you're outside most of the day, don't you feel amazing? Your stress is lower. You just feel good. And this is why a lot of people, when they go on vacation too, me and Beck heard this so much, why are my symptoms just non-existent? And we're like, well, you're outside, right? You're outside and you're, you know, less stress and you're in that, you know, accessible mode where you can actually relax and you don't have all these things on your to-do list. So it's really, really important. And then of course, breathing in that fresh air, it's important for your lungs, which is a major detox pathway. So take deep, deep breaths. And we're such short belly breathers. If you, if you really think about it, we're not taking deep breaths like we should. So make sure that you're cognizant of that and really, you know, putting in that effort because it, it's, you know, beneficial and then open up your, I just want to say one thing about the breathing, because, you know, when I first started getting into meditation and stuff a lot, the, the number one thing they teach you is just even being aware of your breath. Like if you are feeling stress and you go, what is my, what am I doing with my breathing right now? You're going to find you're probably holding your breath for a Mm -hmm. lot of the time. And like you said, those shallow breaths. And sometimes if I, that's the immediate thing I go to, what am I doing with my breath? And then if I change it and I do like belly breathing and I take deeper breaths, I will feel better. we like, yeah. really feel better. Yes. So it, it is really, really, really important. And it really calms that, you know, it, it stimulates that parasympathetic nervous system and helps the vagus nerve. Like breathing is so important. And you think it's something simple, right? Like, yeah, breathe better. But you guys, it really is. If you pay attention to that and put that, you know, in a lot of these simple things and make this an everyday thing to be aware of, um, it helps. One other thing I want to mention before we move on to is making sure you're opening up your windows. I'll even do this in the winter time. Open up your windows and air out your house really good. But not Um, with the air conditioner on, just a side note, because that can cause mold. Right, right. So you just want to make sure you're getting fresh air. Um, I'll do that every once in a while in the winter just to help, you know. Um, And so so many of us are working from home, you know, now. So many people are working from home. And it's like, that's why I go for two walks a day, because- 90% of what I do is at home. And if I don't get outside and get that fresh air and walk and see the sun and all the things we just talked about, it can, it can get depressing, you know? So open those when, you know, when it's nice out, if you can open those windows, that's it. And you're stuck inside working. That's a, it's really helpful too. Yeah. Yeah. So Number five is uh, regular movement and exercise. Mm -hmm. And I think this is important at any place in your health journey. No matter where you are, you do want to try to get in some movement. And I talk about exercise intolerance and I try to make it clear to people when I mention that I am not saying don't exercise, even with exercise intolerance, you just have to do the right exercise for you. So just really moving your body. And I always like to say, you should feel good after your workout. So if you, you know, used to be a runner and you try to run and you feel really wiped out, don't run, walk, try walking. And it was really hard for me as a runner to change over to walking, but now Mm -hmm. I love walking. It's where I, you know, get time to myself and, I can feel creative or I can just feel calm, you know, whatever. It's a really big stress reliever, all that type of stuff. So do the type of exercise that you feel good after you feel like you could, you know, go do stuff and you don't need to lay down or you don't, you know, need to sit down and just recover. You shouldn't really feel like that after you work out, you should feel good energy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, weight training is really good because you know, if you guys haven't heard by now that you need muscle on your body to be healthy, then you need to start looking into that because it is so vital for so many reasons. We need muscle and you can't get muscle if you're not weight training Mm -hmm. and weight training to where you're really, you know, you're really weight training. (laughs) You're not just with your three pounders. Ladies, you're not going to get bulk. You're not going to get bold. You are not. Trust me. I have been lifting heavy for 
<laughs> 20 years and I've never gotten bulky. So you, it's oh. really hard to actually put on a lot of muscle as a woman. Yeah. So, uh, you know, building lean body tissue, it helps you burn fat. The more muscle you have, the more fat you're going to be burning even when you're at rest. Um, it helps your metabolic health, all that type of stuff. We really like the mind pump. Um, yeah. If you guys don't listen to mind pump, I think a lot of you do, but if you don't, they're great. They're our friends. They have amazing exercise programs. If you're kind of the type of person who doesn't know exactly what to do, or maybe you just, you do, but you're kind of bored and you want like a, you just want a routine. They have so many different <laughs> programs and really a program for everybody, you know, so you go on to their um, website and you can just kind of look around and see what there is and which one resonates with you. I like their anabolic program. I've done that one over and over. I've done a, I've done their performance. I've done a lot of their programs, but yeah, they're great. They have so many options. And if you're not a part of a gym, you can do it at home, which is really, really nice. Yes. And convenient. They have Beck and I different are options that we do like to get out of the house <laughs> Yeah, I just went back to the gym to a convent, you know, regular commercial gym after I built my home gym, my little Amazon home gym. Yeah. Um, it was it's convenient, but I also I don't know, I started to feel like I wasn't getting enough. I didn't have enough equipment to really get what I wanted. And also, I just needed to be a little bit more social. So, yeah, um, but regardless of what your, you know, workout situation looks like you know, you, you need to be doing some type of weight training. Yeah. And then make sure you're getting in your steps. You know, that's a great mm -hmm. way just to see how much movement you have. I mean, Becky and I have talked about the aura ring so much, but we do track our steps because it's good to see, okay, wow, I haven't moved a lot. I need to get moving. Right. And we had a guest on, I'm trying, this was a very, very long time ago. One of our first guests, he used to call them exercise snacks. Remember I'm it's, I'm drawing a blank. But anyways, he, he would say, instead of thinking you just, you know, you get your workout in, take exercise snacks throughout the day, just <laughs> get a snack, get up, walk around. I even, my mom even does housewalks. How cute mm -hmm. is that? Mine does too. It's so cute. So, so cute. cute. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, little housewalks if it's too cold for you, but try to bundle up and, you know, get a little cold, get your body you know, more adaptive to that too. It's, it's good for your immune system because you want to adapt to these stressors, right? So anyways, I thought that was cool. Exercise snacks. And we like to aim 10 to 15,000. If you're getting 10 high, high, just so you high. know, I mean, 15, yeah. we, we get around that, but it don't feel you don't like you need to. I, I think it, someone aiming for 10 is probably mm -hmm. a really good yeah. goal. And yeah. if you're, you know, if you get more than that, great. If you don't, yeah. that's uh, 10,000 is awesome because I know many people get around four. So, right. you know, if you're getting 10, you're, you're killing it. So that's exactly. good. And then of course, good hydration. So how many did, how much do we see this in practice back? Mm -hmm. People are dehydrated and then they're over caffeinated and they're like, why am I so tired? Yeah. Why am I pooping? Why do I feel like I'm just sick all the time? Like low energy, stagnant detox pathways, right? It's because you're not drinking enough water and you want to make sure you're getting in good electrolytes too. Beck and I love Element T, Element. They're great. They have all different types of flavors. What's your favorite flavor? I like watermelon. Yeah. I like them all. The citrus is good. I gave a bunch oh, of those okay. to my mom and she was like, these are really good. And I was like, well, let me try it. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I won't be giving you all these ones. I know. They're, they're all you, good. They're all good. Yeah. Did, yeah. did you handle it okay, the citrus? Yeah, because it's there's not really citrus in it. It's okay. um citric acid. So yeah. it's not, yeah, it's it's fine. So they all and I and I'm fine with citrus anyway. I don't really have to watch histamine in my diet anymore. So um only if I my bucket is super full, which it definitely can get that way with stress right. and stuff. So but, you know, one thing we hear all the time is I drink plenty of water. There's yes. no way I'm dehydrated. And I'm like, right, but you're drinking so much water without having any sodium and the things that help us hold on to it. So you're flushing it out and you're taking your electrolytes with you, like, right. the, you know, the stuff we already have. So that's why adding electrolytes can be really helpful, can be super supportive for our adre adrenal glands as well. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's really helpful. One thing we want to start talking about now are, you know, key modulators to support the immune system. And first and foremost is healthy gut flora, right? We talk so much about the gut and the gut is huge for our immune system. You guys, I'm sure if you're listening to our podcast and you're an avid podcast listener, you've heard this among many functional medicine doctors. And the reason why is, you know, we have progenic bacteria, which work to help promote life and the symbiosis within us, right? But then we have pathogenic bacteria, which can create a lot of toxic waste and promote disease in the body. They both can compete for nutrients so they can start to work against each other. So you want to have a healthy ratio of these. So when you have too much of that pathogenic bacteria, this is what we call dysbiosis, right? And this is typically what you can see on a stool test. And stool testing isn't perfect, right? Right. But it's a great look at, you know, look into your gut to see how your body is functioning. If you're dealing with leaky gut, if you're dealing with too much pathogens, you know, you want to have a good balance of these and probiotics are great. We love, you know, taking probiotics and there's a lot of different types and forms and you need to be careful with that. But probiotics are really good at putting that good bacteria in if you can handle it right, depending on where you're at, which um, do you want to add to that back with anything with probiotics? Just, yeah, be careful because, uh, you yeah. know, I know a lot of people listening have histamine issues and a lot of uh, the bacteria and probiotics can actually produce more histamine. And then there's some that can degrade histamine. So there's some that's really good and some that's not. So you just have to be careful. We like something that's kind of neutral. Megaspore biotic is really good. Um, Saccharomyces boulardii is, can be really helpful, especially if you have parasites or H. pylori, and it actually can help with histamine too. Um, uh, Lactobacillus, GG, aramanosis, that's, that is really helpful in supporting the mast cells. So those are safe if you have histamine intolerance. Uh, probiotic histamine X also from seeking health. So we tend to just use those for the most part. Um, it, it really just depends. Like it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing a gut protocol, you need to be careful with what type of probiotic you're taking and when you're taking it, because you can be killing the it's good so bacteria true. with the antimicrobials they're taking. Hopefully if you're doing something like that, whoever's telling you how to do it is telling you that information, right. but but yeah, so you that, you know, sometimes people will take probiotics and they feel terrible. Um, and sometimes people feel really, really well on them. So it really depends on what's going on specifically with you and exactly what you need. Yeah. And then yeah. omega-3 fatty acids are really important. Um, you know, it can be a little hard to get these from the diet sometimes, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, wild caught salmon is a really good source of this uh, sardines, but mm -hmm. they can bother some people, especially because like they're usually canned. So it's, you know, you'd want to try to get those fresh, um, walnuts, which again, are super high in histamine, Whoa. um, can be a good source. Black seeds. Yeah. Right. People, they'll be on omegas or they'll take up the oil yeah. and working with so many patients with histamine, we found, you know, you got to be careful with that. So to yeah. them, while we're working on that bucket, right. You got to eliminate it for a little period of time, but we always bring them back in, you know, yeah. especially if you tolerate it. Okay. I like Chris Cresser's new brand of supplements. They actually sent me their Omega and it's really good. It's really, their, really good. It's really good guys. What is it? They're multi. Yeah. 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 It's it's great. There's so many great supplements. I mean, everybody, yeah. you know, it's so yeah. good. You have a great line too, Beck. Um, the biggest thing with omegas too, is we're getting so it's imbalanced, you know, the omega six to omega three ratios, right. And omega sixes are like in a lot of the grains in the seed oils, because mm -hmm. we all know that these seed oils are in everything. So if you found, if you find that you're not able to get in a lot of those omega three rich foods, cause it is hard. It is hard, like in the world that we live in, supplementing can be very beneficial, you know, getting in your, your omega threes. So don't feel like you can't supplement. You got to just get it from food because I find it very hard personally for me. I'm not eating sardines every day. I personally don't like them. <laughs> yeah. And also the quality of our food these days isn't great. So, right. and if yeah. you have, 
you know, poor gut health, you're not going to absorb a lot of those nutrients anyway. So while we are definitely not like, you know, take a bunch of supplements, we do realize you have to take supplements sometimes. And that's mm-hmm. why I love that episode we did with Chris Cresser. If you guys haven't listened to it, you should, because we talk about that a lot and he really explains that well. Yeah. And he talks about the, the uh, nutrients you really do need to supplement with. And then the ones that you are okay to get from food. So do you want to um, try to hit on some of the main uh, things that are supportive to the immune system now, as far as like yeah. zinc, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. So let's go down to, we take some notes for you guys too, so that we make sure we hit everything. Cause you know, it's a lot of work to put these t- episodes together so we can provide you with all the information. So we touch a little bit on probiotics. It's very important for gut health. It helps increase nutrient absorption, metabolic byproduct formation, immunomodulation, protects against infections. We know all that. You just want to be careful if you're dealing with infections, the type of probiotics that you're taking, when you're taking them, don't take them with antimicrobials, things like that. And if you are working with someone, you know that, and I'm sure they've walked you through a lot of that. Let's talk about vitamin C back some foods, because this is important for the immune system. Yep. So if you're going to get it from food, citrus, lemon, lime, oranges, they're really good. Um, Grapefruit, strawberries, And then green peppers, uh, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, that type of thing. Or you can take it, you yep. know, liposomal. I really like it in that form. Uh, we like Designs for Health has a good one. Um, Quicksilver has a good one. Those are brands I tend to use for that. Yeah. Uh, and it it's just really good immune system it is. support. It's a really good antioxidant. It's really good at supporting histamine levels in the body. And our body doesn't make it. We got to get it from our foods and things. So that's another thing to keep in mind with with vitamin C. I want to share, since we're on vitamin C, my adrenal cocktail I've been doing. That's been helpful. Um, So be careful. You know, if you're someone that does struggle with blood sugar, you want to make sure you're maybe doing this with a high protein, higher fat meal, things like that. Always listen to your body and know what's right for you. But I personally have been finding it's really helping my adrenals right now, just coming off of a stressful year and things like that. So um, I'll do just a half a cup of pure orange juice. I use that, you know, that evolution brand, those green juices, Mm -hmm. those little sugar green juices we liked back. I'll use that a half a cup of that. Then I'll do a half a cup of coconut water. If you tolerate collagen, okay, you can add that in there. I don't, I just don't always do it, but you can. And then I'll take the Elementes um, citrus element. I know L-M-N-T. I spell it out. Okay. I know. I used to do that too until we had Rob on the show and I was like, like, element. oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) So I'll just do that half a cup of fresh, you know, squeezed orange juice, half a cup of coconut water. You can add the collagen if you tolerate it. Okay. Um, And then I'll add a little bit of that salt, but I pair it with a high protein, higher fat, like breakfast or lunch. Okay. I don't ever do it on an empty stomach personally. And it really does what I've noticed because I'm working on, and in my own health right now, my cortisol is a little low just from all the stress. And so that's one thing that I'm really babying right now in my life. And so I found that it really helps my afternoon slump to where I'm not wanting that latte as much. Right. Um, so it's, it's just super helpful. And there's yeah. a lot of vitamin C in it, a lot of vitamin C, which we were just talking about potassium. Um, you got the salt magnesium. And so it's really, really good. And it, it tastes good too. So, yeah. And definitely with the protein is yes. a good point because it can be spike, you know, spike or sugar. sugar. Yeah. I'll do, uh, either a coconut water that has no added anything, right. you know, no That's sugar, definitely important. added. And sometimes just do a little bit of salt to make it easy with that. Or I do the element packets. That's, I do those all the time, especially, you know, I always have, I have uh, a one cup of purity coffee because it's the only coffee I really tolerate. It's mycotoxin free. Like it's so good. Um, But I have the one that's supportive for your liver. And I have, (laughs) we were looking at my, um, gene report the other day, I literally oh. don't methylate on my no. own at all. So as much support as I can get for that. So 
I do that and I do pair it with some protein yeah. because I don't think, and I also try to say, I'm also about awake for 30 to 60 minutes before I'll do this. Cause I, I try to wake up on my own yeah. um, and then I'll have coffee and that protein. And then I do want some hydration after that because coffee is a diuretic. So it, it will dehydrate, you know? And so I I'll do a big Yeti with one of my watermelon elements in it. And I feel, I can feel myself like feeling really good, you know, like as I'm going through that cup and I, you know, and then I get, and I get into my workout and I always have one of those when I'm working out too. And then sometimes when I'm in the sauna, cause I'm sweating so much, I might just take a coconut water. If I feel like I need more potassium, like it just depends what I'm doing or what I've had already that day. Cause coconut water is a little higher in potassium and element is higher in sodium. Right. So Right. It's, it's amazing. Once you start to learn what your body needs and what you thrive on, and then you, you really do, if you stick to these things every day, you learn, you know, what exactly what you need. And it's true. You feel like your cells are alive. It, it's yeah. just kind of like that feeling. So I, I love that. That's because what I'm starting to feel with that adrenal cocktail too. Yeah. Because so many of us feel like crap because of our adrenals and because we're dehydrated. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that's sure. like killing two birds with one stone. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and then zinc is super oh. important. Um, yeah. I personally take a zinc supplement mm-hmm. sometimes about 30 milligrams. I take, I like the pure encapsulation brand, um, but you can get it from spinach, pumpkin seeds, salmon, grass fed dairy. Dairy actually can have a lot, quite a bit of zinc in it. Um, but it's just really good at just supporting the immune system, um, phagocytosis, uh, (laughs) intracellular killing cytokine production. So we want all this stuff if we're trying to kill any type of infection or any type of invader. Um, Mm -hmm. so that's, you know, zinc is really good at that type of stuff, but make sure you take it with food because you can get really nauseous from taking a zinc supplement and not know why you're suddenly so nauseous. So we always say eat with your supplement with the zinc supplement. There's a lot of like gut supporting powders and things like that, that have zinc in it. And, you know, when, when people are trying to heal their gut and things like that, they tend to take these powders on an empty stomach. And I'm like, is that why you're nauseous? You know, so you want to be careful of that because it will make you want to throw up. Yeah. I have thrown up from zinc before, before. I know. Yeah. When you don't eat when you don't eat enough too. So have like a pretty good meal or take it with a meal. If you remember that is larger, not just like a bite of something. Yeah. You like gotta- protein, you know, you definitely yeah. want to have protein for sure. Exactly. And then vitamin D with K2. I mean, if you haven't heard about vitamin D in the immune system by now, um, but yes, we want to make sure we're taking it with K2 because as we take vitamin D, we know it can increase calcium. We want to drive that calcium into our bones and K2 helps us absorb it better too. So I personally like to see levels, you know, around 70, 65, 70 ish sweet spots. Some may even say, I mean, there's a lot of different information about vitamin D levels. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful though, because vitamin D toxicity is a thing. So you don't want to just, you want to keep an eye on your levels and see where you're at, you know? Um, So yeah, just check it with your doctors. um, And there's a lot of different brands that we love. And if you don't, if you're not in the sun directly, right. Especially like where I'm from, it's something that I definitely supplement a lot with, you know, and I have to, too, even being Mm -hmm. in Florida, because I don't absorb it as well. When you have Hashimoto's, that's one thing you don't absorb vitamin D as well. So there's different reasons other than Hashimoto's also that you can be that way. But, um, so yeah, so, so if your levels, I say like 50 to 70 is ideal. Um, Mm -hmm. if you're not in that, you know, even though you're getting sun, you, you want to probably take a supplement. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course, gentle detox, right? We, that's super important for our immune system guys. And it's gentle. It's things that you can just incorporate in your day. It's not something that you have to take. We were supporting these natural detox pathways that work so hard for us, but they do get overburdened. So dry brushing, we love dry brushing. You can do it before you get in the shower. Um, Even things like castor oil packs, you can sleep with them. They're very helpful at stimulating the lymphatic system, helping with healthy bowel movements. We need healthy bowel movements. 
Um, even things like lymphatic massage is great if you're able to do it or um, just moving your body stimulates, stimulates this, you know, the lymphatic system, like we talked about with exercise, Epsom salt baths are amazing. Um, if you tolerate them good, if not, you could do the foot soaks. We go into a lot of this in our core program, um, walking you guys through the different detox methods, but you can find a lot of information online too, guys, you know, and, and it's one of the best things you can do to support your body. So a lot of these things seem simple, right? But who does them every day? I I find personally, if I bring this to someone's attention and they're like, oh yeah, I've heard that. I'm like, but are you doing it, right? Are you doing Mm -hmm. it? Are you sticking to it? Chances are no. So if you commit to that and you stick with these things, you will feel a difference. It just takes a little time. So Especially if you have issues with detox, yeah, which many people do. Yeah. It is a game changer and it can be a little annoying to have yes. to go. Sometimes I don't want to go sit in the sauna, you know, or I don't want to go sit. I'm not a sit down type of person. I don't like to sit in an Epsom salt bath, but I kind of make it part of my routine where before I got my sauna, cause I wait, I just got one not that long ago, but I was doing Epsom salt baths every night and I was feeling so good, you know, such a difference with helping me to push toxins out because I really literally need an army to help me. My body does not like to do it on its own. And then once I got the sauna, I mean, game changer, game changer. I would say the, the remaining part of chemical sensitivity I had left is gone. Like I can go to a store for an hour now instead of where it was, I couldn't go at all. And then I started, you know, really healing and I could go for maybe 20 minutes I could go for an endless amount of time now. And it's so cool because I haven't been able to do that for so long. And, you know, and, and exercising in the heat, you know, that type of stuff, exercising at all, but then exercising and sweating and being okay with that. It's like, you know, when when that's taken away from you and then you can do it again, it's life changing. So Mm -hmm. the gentle detox is what has helped me to be able to do that for sure. I love that. Yeah, I know. I absolutely love gentle detox and it's therapeutic. Like if someone's like, if you're stressed, what do you want to do? I have no like desire to grab a drink. I want to go do an Epsom salt bath or, you know what I mean? If you pick these healthier things to focus on, right, you're only going to get better and you're going to start seeing results because it really is it really is simple. It takes time and it takes effort, but these things are so important. We have so many people that are like, God, I just want to pop a supplement, pop a pill and be on my way and fix all my stuff. And when usually it's a lot of what our lifestyle is doing to us, right? If you really start to peel back that and focus on these tools that we're giving you, you will start to feel better because it really is simple. Um, Tell us your little uh, stovetop recipe because you were telling me this the other day and I was like, okay. (laughs) So for all my, for all my basic bitches out there, (laughs) (laughs) no, but for real, like I love fall time, you know, and you, we starting to see all the pumpkin spice latte, you know, recipes. Well, this is like an, um, like an aroma not essential oils, but similar, like it's very non-toxic, smell good for the home that just can kind of simmer on your stove. And what it is, is you take just a big pot, any type of pot that you have, and you want to put, you want to slice one apple, slice one orange, just keep everything intact, the peels and everything. You want to do half to a whole lemon, slice that up, put that in there, two full cinnamon sticks, a half a teaspoon of clove, you want to do a teaspoon of nutmeg and then a teaspoon of vanilla. And then what you'll do is you'll bring that to a simmer and then you'll turn it down low and you do want to watch it on the stove because the water will go down, but you can keep adding water to it and it'll last about four days. So if you have company coming over, throw away your Glade pumpkin, oh, plugins, plugins, Guys, this smells so good and it lasts for a good four days and it is cheap. You can just, you know, you can keep a lot of 
both in your house and have it throughout Christmas time, fall time. And it smells so good. People are like, what is this? And it's great. It's natural. And that right there is some limbic system work. Literally. Let me tell you, it is. It's so, it's so fun. I love stuff like that. So whenever I find, you know, fun recipes or, or things to make your life a little less toxic, I'm going to share it. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. definitely going to make that. Even though here in Florida, it doesn't feel like fall until uh, winter because, you know, we don't have seasons here. We have yes. warm and warmer. Um, <laughs> so I think for, you know, when you have seasons, it's even more fun when they change. But anyway, this type of thing, this with maybe a couple decorations can really, you know, it can be fun and it can get you it's in that fun. mood. And I think that's why people love the pumpkin lattes. It's mostly just the spirit of the holidays and that the type experience. of experience. It's those small micro moments. I know for me, those type of things make me happy. You know, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I thought I would share it. Well, we really hope you guys got something out of this. We really tried to give you some takeaways and we want you to stay healthy this fall. We yes. want to stay healthy this fall yes. too. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you guys for listening and have a great day. Bye-bye. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, if you can pop over and leave a review, that would be awesome. You can also find us over at healthbabes.com where you can find our courses, our latest book. We also are on Instagram at the health babes, at Dr. Becky Campbell or at Dr. Crystal Home. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.